The Relationship Between Linebacker to Vietnam, 1972, and Yom Kippur Six-Day War, 1967, the CIA's plan to steal SA-2 missiles and Vietnam's air defense acumen. In 1957, the Soviet Union's Design Bureau, led by renowned anti-aircraft missile experts such as Yerasputin, Pygrushin, and Korobov, developed an advanced anti-aircraft missile system known as the S-75 Vina or S-75 SAM, codenamed SA-2 by NATO, in 1959, under Soviet guidance. The People's Liberation Army of China successfully shot down a reconnaissance aircraft from Taiwan violating Chinese airspace Susuing SA-2 missiles. This marked the first successful use of surface-to-air missiles to shoot down enemy aircraft in the history of air defense warfare. Then, on May 1, 1960, the Soviet Union used SA-2 surface-to-air missiles to shoot down a U-2 reconnaissance plane from the United States flying at an altitude of 21. 000 meters over the Sverdlov region. The pilot ejected and was captured by the Soviet Union, triggering a political crisis between the two superpowers, still reeling from the capabilities of the new Soviet anti-aircraft missile system, U.S. intelligence showed that the SA-2 air defense system had been deployed in Cuba, considered the backyard of the United States, and shot down a U-2 reconnaissance plane over Cuban skies on October 27, 1962. The successive failures with previously deemed invincible reconnaissance aircraft made. The U.S. uneasy, leading the CIA to plan to steal Soviet SA-2 anti-aircraft missiles to obtain technical information about the system, U.S. concerns were justified. Firstly, the S-75 anti-aircraft missile had excellent performance, but Americans knew little about its combat capabilities. Secondly, the unexpected appearance of the SA-2 in the backyard of the U.S. and its role in igniting the Caribbean crisis. However, this could also be a good opportunity for the U.S. to acquire the SAM-2. In the second half of 1962, CIA operatives and Defense Intelligence Agency personnel began training to steal SA-2 missiles at a base in Florida. They devised a contraption resembling an iron arm under a helicopter, attempting to hoist a 10-meter-long iron tube into a truck compartment to simulate carrying the missile. On November 5, 1962, the head of the KGB intelligence team in the U.S. sent Moscow classified information number 856. U.S. experts are very interested in Soviet air defense missiles in Cuba and highly evaluate these missiles, with high combat performance and a very comprehensive design, especially after the incident with the USU-2 reconnaissance plane shot down over Cuban skies. U.S. experts concluded that currently, the U.S. had no weapon equivalent to the Soviet SAM-2. At that time, the U.S. was still experimenting with the Nike Zeus anti-aircraft missile system. The Pentagon was urgently planning to steal Soviet anti-aircraft missile samples from Cuba and transport them to the U.S. for research although the SA-2 missile system was deliberately placed in the lower hold of the transport ship when shipped to Cuba, unloading was conducted at night to ensure secrecy. Despite camouflage measures, they could not escape U.S. surveillance. In 1992, the CIA declassified a secret report sent to President Kennedy, stating that the U.S. was preparing to steal Soviet missiles with the help of Cuban exiles. However, this plan was thwarted by Cuban and Soviet counterintelligence agencies. To counter the U.S. intelligence theft campaign, Soviet troops in Cuba applied a simple and practical method of bundling multiple missiles together, making it impossible for helicopters to lift such a heavy load. Consequently, the U.S.'s plan to steal SA-2 in Cuba failed, the Americans did not give up, and the confrontation over the SA-2 missile system continued into the Vietnam War. On July 24, 1965, Vietnam's SA-2 missile forces, with Soviet assistance, shot down three U.S. F-4 fighter jets over the northwestern region of Hanoi. Since then, the SA-2 ambush tactic became widespread, 
and U.S. Air Force losses continued to increase. For this reason, the U.S. Air Force changed tactics and equipped AGM-45 Shrike anti-radar missiles on fighter jets from 1968 onwards. Once pilots detected radar signals, they would launch Shrike missiles, which would home in on the radar beam and attack it directly. During the North Vietnam bombing campaign, the U.S. launched over 5,000 Shrike anti-radar missiles, but Vietnamese missile crews had a countermeasure. They would turn off their radar or change frequencies, causing the Shrike missiles to lose guidance and veer off course. By 1967, the Soviet Union discovered that the Americans had sensitive information about the Vietnam SAM Systems SA-2 anti-aircraft missile system. From November 14 to 16, 1967, Vietnam launched nearly 90 missiles in combat, but none hit their targets, with a 0% success rate. It was evident that the Americans had interfered with the missile's guidance. The term electronic warfare emerged during the Vietnam War, our radar stations would detect and lock onto targets, but the missiles couldn't reach them because they were jammed by US countermeasure devices. However, just a few days later, we and Soviet experts found a solution by changing the guidance radar's frequency, it turns out that the US Air Force knew the SA-2 missile control frequency. A SA-2 anti-aircraft missile system fell into Israeli hands during the 1967 Arab-Israeli War, and Israel quickly shared this information with the U.S., providing them with what they wanted from the SAM. 2. At that time, the Soviet Union provided two SA-2 anti-aircraft missile battalions to Egypt upon request. Initially, Soviet military experts were responsible for maintaining and operating these missile systems, but after the war ended, they were handed over to Egypt, so the SA-2 anti-aircraft missile system that the US dreamed of, they finally got, without any effort. Because the US had obtained the secrets of the SAM-2, the Soviet Union had to carry out extensive upgrades and improvements to the SA-2 system, primarily in terms of electronic systems. And despite the SA-2 missiles being outplayed by the US, Vietnam still managed to destroy B-52s in its own way. In the decisive strategic battle over the skies of Hanoi in December 1972, even though our SA-2 air defense complexes had been outplayed by the U.S. beforehand, the U.S. Air Force still suffered a bitter defeat, to recall once again Six-Day War, 1967, Third Arab-Israeli War, in 1965, the SA-2 air defense system, S-75, was sold by the Soviet Union to Egypt and Syria to counter the Israeli Air Force. During Yom Kippur were the Six-Day War, June 5 to 11, 1967, between the Egyptian-Syrian coalition and Israel, the Egyptian army couldn't withstand the Israeli armored division's attacks. So they retreated from the Sinai Desert. During the uncontrolled withdrawal, Egypt left behind more than 20 sets of SA-2 equipment, similar to the equipment Vietnam was using to counter the U.S.'s destructive war in the North. These sets of equipment were dissected and studied by American weapons experts, applying electronic warfare methods to counter the SAM-2. In 1969, one of Egypt's P-12 multi-scenario radar systems fell into Israeli hands, and all the analysis results were transferred to the U.S. Thus, by 1970, all types of weak air defense radar systems of the Vietnamese People's Army had been outplayed by the enemy, and the U.S. had developed highly effective jamming devices. Like the B-52D, which initially carried eight jamming devices, by December 1972, it had increased to 15 jamming devices, including two aluminum foil jamming launchers. U.S. military experts confidently claimed that the B-52's current adversary was not the SA-2 missile but the MiG aircraft, as all the technical secrets of the SA-2 had been thoroughly exploited by the U.S. in the Middle East beforehand. The enemy's extensive use of powerful electronic warfare rendered the radar of our air defense system unable to detect and lock onto B-52 targets. The P-12 radar stations of the SA-2 missile units only received dense jamming, sometimes blanking out the screens entirely, causing a lot of difficulties for the air defense and air force units. The consequence of the U.S. Air Force's strong use of electronic warfare was that our SA-2 missiles, when launched, couldn't be controlled, sometimes landing elsewhere or deviating from the target and self-detonating. 
specifically, on April 13, 1972, when B-52s attacked Tan Hoa, we had two SAM units in the area, but due to heavy jamming, they couldn't target the B-52s. Especially, in the early morning of April 16, 1972, 12 B-52s attacked Haiphong, precisely when the 363 Air Defense Division was conducting B-52 interception exercises. In this battle, the 363rd Division launched a series of missiles, but couldn't shoot down any of the enemy's B-52s. Through studying the enemy's jamming tactics, our engineers noticed a special phenomenon, the enemy's jamming devices didn't interfere with the 3 cm wave band. For Vietnam, this discovery was extremely valuable, the reason being, at that time, we had equipped a type of radar developed by China working in the 3 cm wave band, specifically the K8-60 target acquisition radar commonly used for 57mm anti-aircraft guns. The K8-60 radar operates in both the 10 cm and 3 cm wave bands. With this discovery, we integrated the target element of the K8-60 radar working in the 3 cm wave band with the SA-2 missile guidance system. In November 1971, the first set of equipment was successfully developed and named KX. In February 1972, the Ministry of Defense ordered the deployment of the K-8-60 radar for combat testing at Battalion 89, Regiment 274, stationed in Quang Binh, to re-evaluate its ability to detect B-52 targets, counter-jamming, and counter-strike missiles. As a result, in a period of two months, February 22 to April 6, 1972, the KX equipment detected targets 18 times including two B-52s and 16 tactical aircraft. Following these highly favorable results, the Joint Chiefs of Staff decided to implement the project to improve and install six sets of S-75 Dvina, SAM-2, equipment in Hanoi to prepare for B-52 attacks. However, only two sets were completed, including the trial set. These two sets of equipment were installed for Battalion 79. Regiment 257, deployed in the Southern Red River region, and Battalion 57, Regiment 261, deployed in the Northern Red River region. During the 1972 Dain Bien Phu in the air campaign, Battalion 57 effectively utilized target information from the K-8-60 radar to engage B-52s. In the battle on the early morning of December 21, Battalion 57 performed exceptionally well, shooting down two B-52s with two S-75 missiles. Especially, Battalion 7-9 shot down one B-52 entirely using the unified targeting method with the K-8-60 radar, seeing the effectiveness of the K-8-60 radar. After December 25, the Joint Chiefs of Staff ordered the use of all K-8-60 radars in the Hanoi area to intercept B-52s. If a target was detected, the information would be relayed back to the command posts, therefore, from December 26 until the end of the campaign, we achieved even more resounding victories. The special feature of the K-8-60 radar is its ability to distinguish B-52s from other types of fighter aircraft, including decoys. This is due to the unique characteristics of the B-52's reflected signals received by the K-8-60, furthermore, the K-8-60 radar had the advantage of not being susceptible to Shrike missiles, as the Shrike missiles only targeted the 10 cm wave band of the missile control station. Therefore, the equipment was almost immune to the frantic electronic countermeasures of the U.S. Tactical Air Force. After more than 40 years since the 12-day campaign in 1972, the secrets gradually came to light, and only then did U.S. Air Force experts acknowledge the innovative capabilities of the Vietnamese Air Defense Forces and admit the fatal weaknesses in their strategy. The improvements to the SA-2 missiles and the intelligent tactics of the Vietnamese People's Army surprised the U.S. Air Force during the 1972 strategic raids, the SA-2 forces played a pivotal role, shooting down 34 strategic B-52 bombers and hundreds of other tactical aircraft forcing the U.S. to de-escalate the war and continue negotiations leading to the 1973 Paris Peace Accords. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. Please subscribe to receive the latest videos. Purchase unique Vietnamese products on our website, and we will ship worldwide.
my website, https://vhshandmade24h.com.